Rub up your engines! Okay, here we have a Volkswagen that runs on vegetable oil. The guy's done it all himself, and actually he's been doing it for over 30 years. He once bought a car that was being scrapped in a junkyard for a dollar, and he told them he'd give it back to him if it didn't work. But it did work, and he drove it for years, and then sold it to somebody for a thousand bucks. In his case, he gets it for nothing. There's a bunch of Portuguese restaurants. He's known them for years. They give him the grease stuff, and he's got a place at his house where he has a settling tank that he puts it in, sits about 30 days. Now, in the winter, of course, it would congeal. So he's got a little solar heater to heat it, to let it settle, and then he creates his own fuel. Now, if you look at an overall picture of it though, it's getting kind of funny today with the price of diesel. Now, it's getting expensive in the United States. You can buy a gallon of vegetable oil. I think it says free, but let's say you're buying it. You can buy a gallon of vegetable oil at Walmart for seven bucks, okay? Well, the price of diesel got pretty close to seven bucks recently, but today in England, it's a completely different story. Diesel fuel, when you compare the dollar to the gallon to the liter, it's $9.19 a gallon. You can buy vegetable oil in England today cheaper than you can buy diesel fuel. The mileage is unbelievable. Now, the diesel fuel can congeal, so he's got heater core hoses going through, and here's his extra tank that has the vegetable oil. These are warm, so he doesn't have to worry about it congealing. Now you wanna talk about distance. Between 10 gallon vegetable oil and the diesel tank holds about 13 gallons of diesel, he has actually driven this thing 1,900 miles before he had to fill it up. And if you wanna talk about safety, check this out. If you got a gasoline car, the last thing on earth you want are spare gas tanks in the trunk that you're carrying in case you run out of gas, you get in a wreck, blow up, and get killed. Well, here's his spare gas look. Market basket vegetable oil and Mazzola corn oil. And of course, one of the best things of it is, this ain't no stinking diesel. It smells like french fries. But not only does it smell good, it's better for the environment. You run them on vegetable oil, they put out about 90% less pollution than diesel fuel. Diesel fuel is relatively polluting. That's just the way that it is. When you have an engine that's only firing by compression pressure with no ignition source, it just doesn't burn as fully as gasoline where there's a spark and it fires it all up and burns most of it up. That's why the modern diesels have diesel particulate filters and they have to use that stupid DPF fluid. Some of them catalytic converters like the Volkswagens. That's why you want an old one like this that doesn't have all that crap on it. If you're gonna do this, you'd wanna get one that's pre-2010 so it doesn't have all that garbage on it. And don't think, oh, I'm polluting the environment by not having it on. Run this on vegetable, it's putting out 90% less pollutant so does it really care that it doesn't have the stupid modern cat system on? No, it doesn't. Now you remember, he bought one for a dollar. He had an 86 Volkswagen diesel. He sold it for over a thousand bucks. It had 400,000 miles on it then. So you think, oh, you can't run them on this. Yes, you can. Now, you're gonna lose a little bit of horsepower. These aren't racing machines anyways. It's not racing fuel, obviously. They do actually in Europe race a lot of diesels. They have diesel races, but they're using specially refined diesel fuel and they got special engines. This is just a stock Volkswagen diesel engine. You can see it's an older one, so it's got a mechanical pump that runs off of a belt. And he's got dual systems, because when it's really cold, you can start him up on the diesel fuel, then you can switch it over. He's got switches, so he can go from one to the other. Doesn't have to go under the hood. He has switches in here to turn him on and off. He lives here, right? Let's say he's on the East Coast, Rhode Island in the winter. Well, he starts it up on a diesel. The engine warms up. Then the heat that the radiator normally will use to cool the engine and make the heater go, just through the hoses that he has, runs through the car, that's what's in those insulated lines, heater hoses, and as I said before, it then heats up this marine tank that's got his vegetable oil in. Now, if you had a tank like that in your trunk that had gasoline or diesel fuel, you're breaking all kinds of laws. You get in a rear end collision, poof, you're gonna blow up. Well, you get in a collision, the vegetable oil, hey, it doesn't even make that much of a mess. You know, the local animals will probably come and lick the stuff up after you're done. It's certainly not an EPA hazard like spilled gasoline or diesel as I Of course, he left the factory tank on it, so that meets all specifications for collisions and stuff. There's just vegetable oil in the back. And you can see they got a big enough trunk, doesn't take up all that much space. Man, if you could go 19 
1,500 miles before you have to fill something up. Now, personally, I think my rear end would fall off sitting in a car that long, driving non-stop. But of course, he doesn't do it non-stop. He takes rests like other people do. So let's take it for a spin. And this is a 1.9 TDI. It does have a turbocharger. You can run it with turbocharging vegetable oil. Hey, this thing's got some zip going uphill. Look at it. And that's 100% vegetable oil power. You can see it's got decent acceleration. And realize, this is just a stock Volkswagen 1.9 four-cylinder engine. It does have a turbo on it, and it works quite well, even with the vegetable oil. But I do have to say, if I was going 1,900 miles, I wouldn't want to be driving on these Rhode Island roads. The bumpiness would get to me. I'd look for some smoother highways. But that smell, I just can't get enough of it. I feel I'm at the county fair and people are making hush puppies and fried dough. They fry everything, fried pickles. Now, 22 years ago, he was on the paper in Massachusetts and they said, Here's this guy from Portugal. Doesn't have any degrees or anything. They all said the engineers, you can't do this. They won't work on a blah, 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 blah. Well, that was 22 years ago. He made it work then. It works even better now. You can see it actually works. He had 400,000 miles on the one that he sold to somebody else. Now, yes, he learned about how to do it. You can go to his website if you want. You can go the whole hog and you can do one yourself if you wanted to. But let's take the vast majority of Americans. The only thing they can do is open the gas cap and pour fuel in. You'd bypass almost all of his fancy technology, which is actually quite basic. You could just buy regular vegetable oil that's already refined, you know? And like I say, in England, you'd be saving $2 a gallon using vegetable oil in a diesel versus working a diesel fuel that they charge $9.19 a gallon for. And you can see it works. It runs perfectly fine. Oil company saying that doesn't work or does or whatever, but you can see it's totally doable. And in his case, it's free because he knows the Portuguese restaurants. They want to get rid of the grease. He's got a setup at his house with set lean tanks and stuff but even if you didn't want to go that far and you're just going to buy vegetable oil thick you're not polluting it's totally biodegradable and it's totally sustainable and the mileage i mean that's insanity you went 1900 miles on this thing on a combination of a tank of diesel and a tank of just the vegetable oil now let's say you wanted to be really ecologically minded you didn't want to use the diesel hardly at all except to start it up he's got the 10 gallon tank for the vegetable oil it go about 500 miles that's not bad range you know and like i said you could have gallons of it in little containers it's not explosive or anything it's just pour some more in if you really wanted to 500 miles is pretty good range running on vegetable oil it smells good it pollutes 90 percent less and the guy did it on his own it just shows what people can do if they put their mind to something and don't listen to the expert that say you can't do this you can't do that he's done it you went for a ride got plenty of acceleration and the last one he had he got 400,000 miles on it in a volkswagen engine so really it works it can be done and sure he rigged things these are the solenoid switches guess what they came from a ford ford tap dually tanks you got to switch it from one to the other you just bought two of those and put it on not that expensive to do this stuff if you want to do it yourself i'm kind of amazed that there aren't people that are trying to do it commercially but of course then they'd have to pass epa regulations and they'd have to bribe all the politicians whatever nonsense goes on with that i remember years ago i made a video with that crazy helio car and the Elio car, they never ended up making it, but the guy found out that even though he was just making these three-wheeled cars and he was gonna make them in Shreveport, Louisiana, he found out that in order to start producing a car in the United States, it's gonna be a minimum cost. If you're gonna produce them for the public and pass all the laws, of 250 million bucks just to start up. So that's probably one of the reasons you don't see any people selling this. They'd have to put too much money in the infrastructure to please all the politicians and fat cats smoking cigars and going to fundraising parties. So we got a Volkswagen that runs on vegetable oil. It is totally doable. People say you can't do it, you can. This man proved you can. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Nat Nathan says, I have a burning smell on my 2017 Mustang GT after I hit the red line. I got it used in December 2021. It's a 2017. I hit the red line twice for about one and a half seconds, but noticed a strange burning scent. I didn't do a burnout, so I don't think it's the tires. What could it be? You don't want to red line a car. You rev it as high as it can, especially one that's six years old. Stuff can go wrong. Now let's spray it something simple. If you red line it real high, maybe the valve cover gaskets leak 
leak some oil, then it gets on the exhaust and smolders. Now the other thing is a bad thing. If you did rev it too high, you're going to start burning up stuff, pistons, head gasket. You want to pray when you open the hood, you smell it under the hood, because then, okay, something's leaking, right? But if you go to the back of the car and you smell it coming out of the tailpipe, then yes, you've damaged the engine. Pistons will get worn, you can start blowing the head gasket, it'll start burning pieces of it up, but then you're going to smell it coming out of the exhaust. It isn't burning the gas right because the engine's worn inside, it'll smell at the exhaust, not under the hood. Do it when it's not windy. Car's idling, you open the hood, you smell it under the hood, it's in the hood. If you don't, close the hood, go to the back and it's coming out of the exhaust. On a windy day, if the wind's blowing, it might blow it all over the place, you might blow the back the front or the front of the back and confuse you. Do it on a windless day. And you'll be able to figure out where the smell is coming from. Pray it's coming from under the hood and it's just a leaky gasket. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.